our God isn't a boring God. He's a powerful God, and he's an imaginative God, obviously. Like, he created you, he created me. But he created things such as the ocean for us to enjoy, he created the waves for Lauren to surf, and the forest for us to wander through. My name is Yvonne Atchison, and I am an artist here on Vancouver Island. I kind of, if you want to call it, specialize in acrylic paint, and I like to focus on the brighter colors usually because it's uplifting, so it's almost like Vancouver Island paintings in Mexican colors. My inspiration is definitely from creation on the island. We feel so blessed to live here. The oceans, the coastlines. It's almost like you're wandering through the imagination of God. You know, like he thought up trees. What kind of an incredible creator thinks of trees? We are all without excuse. Who God is is shown through his creation. Look over here. Oh, hey. <laughs> mm. She's like, so definitely Nan's best friend. I don't think I could ever get rid of this piano. It's 1905. And, uh, and it holds its tune pretty well. <laughs> when I turned 14, I started teaching piano in Ladner. We lived on the mainland. And I thought I was going to be teaching piano actually till I was 100 years old. I still possibly one day will. But Lauren and I moved, he proposed on the ferry actually in 2000. We used to, when we were dating, we would go back and forth for fun uh, on the ferry. It was like a cheap cruise. We both really liked the ocean and that's still a huge common bond. But when we met, we were doing completely different things than we are right now. I was you know, teaching piano and Lauren and I got married and I ended up helping him with his fashion design business. It was kind of like streetwear, cargo pants back then, and it was called Fluent Clothing. Anyway, we did a leap of faith. Like Lauren found a minimum wage job over here so that we could move to the island. And we got this little house, like it's been wonderful for us. And I, I left all my students, I had a lot of piano students over there at the time. I was helping him with the clothing business. But when we got over here, I started getting more students and that's what we did for a while. But anyways, he bought me, I honestly don't remember whether it was paints or an easel or both or what for Christmas about 11 years ago. I wanted to, to try painting. I thought it would be fun to do just as a hobby. I haven't taken art classes or anything, but I remember the first night I, I set up my easel over there and started painting and I painted for a long time this one particular scene which my parents have. It's like, it's supposed to be like of Jordan River, looking with the moon, looking through trees. I, I was just in love with it. It was so fun. <laughs> and I thought that it was so good. I was like, wow. Now I look at that painting, which we, you know, my parents have in their bedroom, and it is so not good. But anyway, I loved it and it was a passion. And I started painting other things. The third painting I did was of a mermaid. I used to want to be Ariel and marry Prince Eric, but I got Mr. Ford Chamber who loves the ocean anyways. Lauren said when he saw that one, he said, Yvonne, I think you might be an artist. And, and that meant a lot to me. My piano students, when their parents would come in to pick them up, their parents were asking, oh, would you sell your painting you did? I really like it, you know, would you sell it? And I thought to myself, oh. And it started to get to the point where it was a better living doing the artwork. It's funny because when we were dating at his mom's house, we had boxes lining the halls and everything of clothing. And now we end up with boxes of my artwork lining the halls. And it's like we've both kind of helped each other with our businesses. And he's definitely sacrificed a lot for my artwork with his surfboard shaping business. I believe could be really great if, if he had put more time into that as opposed to my artwork. I... Okay, we're just missing Haley. Haley's usually with us here. Huh. Oh, 
of all the places, honestly, to paint, this is, this is it for me. Oh, so there it is. I have no idea how it's gonna turn out because people don't see all my paintings and um, I'm a slow painter. So you might be sitting there for 100 hours. It's a long process for me because I'm still learning as I go. I suppose everybody's still learning. I'm gonna start with white and a little bit of blue. Sometimes, even if it's a cloudy day, I make it a bright sky. But today it truly is bright, so I'm using bright. I start with the sky, and luckily acrylic paint does dry quickly. So after the sky, it's almost like I paint from the distance to coming forward to where I'm sitting. It's funny that I haven't painted this place before. Like Lauren said, gosh, we come here, lately it's been like five times a week. It's so peaceful, it is so close. The water just funnels through here, so it carves out the rocks, it makes them look very unique. When you're painting in plein air, there are definite obstacles, uh, such as bugs flying into your paint, or the wind knocking your easel over, or my hands freezing. And then often the colors won't be the same as what I'm looking at. That's called artistic license. I definitely have always sort of veered towards blue. I like blues and greens. You know how it says that eye hasn't seen and ear hasn't heard what God has prepared for us? I wonder sometimes, you know how dogs are colorblind? They don't know what color certain colors are. I do wonder if we can't see other colors that are there. I guess as an artist, I think about color a lot. I get distracted by color. But I do wonder what, you know, maybe there's other colors. <laughs> There have been little answers to prayer all throughout my life in funny ways. When I was with my family, I was probably around 10 or 11, we sailed to Princess Louisa Inlet and we had to moor at um, Smuggler's Cove this one night on the way. And so my dad threw the anchor overboard and unfortunately the rope went out with the anchor. So we're like trying to moor in this cove and the anchor's now down in the ocean. <laughs> not attached to our boat. My parents were freaking out. They went out in the dinghy to try and see where the anchor might be because you could barely see the bottom of the ocean there. And they were out there for, my dad says it was like half an hour, 45 minutes, I don't know. It seemed like a while, but I was praying back in our sailboat and I felt that if I went out when my parents got back, that God would show me where the anchor was like right away. And it was a feeling where, again, you're like fighting, okay, do I, do I do this? That's gonna sound so stupid to my parents. Like, you were just out there for 45 minutes, but I just feel I should go out there myself, you know, 11 years old and, and look. But I did, and it was like within a minute or two, I just paddled out to where it was, and I fully still remember seeing that anchor, and I was so excited, I called, I was like, Dad, it's right here! I think he was in shock, like seriously? And so he had to dive down a couple times, but he got it, and we were able to get that anchor back. So I, I have painted the sailboat, my sailboat, our family sailboat, and it's called Anchor. And there's a little anchor at the bottom and the anchor is attached to the boat. But you know, the, the power of prayer and that God answers little things and he cares about little things. And then also about big things. Often it's like on the way to a market, God, please provide. Or just this past Saturday, I was like, God, do you really want me to keep doing this? Because people are a little bit more cautious about buying things that aren't necessities. I think art is a necessity, but like Jesus said, pray, give us this day our daily bread. 
we're not rich, but man, to be able to do what we love for a living is amazing. But this is the best, like the best farmer's market on the island, without a doubt. Everything is local, like everyone here is super supportive. It's incredible. We're really blessed to live where we are. And then there's also tourists that come to Qualcomm a lot. I guess they want art from Vancouver Island. We live in their vacation place. The first show I did was in Tofino. I haven't been back there very often to do shows or anything. I don't know why, because half of my art is Tofino. But I did one there, and all I had was originals because I didn't do prints at the time. I just thought, I should see what happens. And nobody bought anything. The whole show, I was really discouraged. I was really discouraged. Until it was time to pack up. And this little boy that had come back and forth a lot, he kept coming back and he came back with his mom and dad or something and they said, oh, you know what? We want this one, this one, and this one. And they bought three originals. And if they hadn't done that, it's funny, the things like that affect you. If they hadn't done that, I may still be doing piano, which would be okay too, but it's funny how little things can lead a person in such a totally different direction. Just wait, he'll move it. That's yeah. terrible there. Just... Lauren! <laughs> Lauren said, Yvonne, all you have to do is show it. And he has a lot more faith in my art than I do. I struggle still with, you know, self-doubt. But if I can focus on Christ, that changes. If I get anxious about at market seeing other people selling more stuff or whatever, it's stupid stuff, okay, human brain. Oh no, like what's going on? I think maybe this artist over here is, is doing so well and I haven't sold much. And But if I change my perspective from numbers to, you know what, hey, there's a person over there who looks like they're having a bad day and they come by and it's like, Hey, how's it going? And you can you can talk to them. You can see, I know how I've been affected by one simple sentence, good or bad. And so I see that and I'm like, yes. Then I'm focusing on the right thing, I think. And then my anxiety just goes away. Let God speak through us. And it's amazing how you can touch people in these markets. You know, I'll have people crying at the at my table, which is uh, like my art display. Something will touch them in a certain way. And I'm not sure why I had a gentleman crying at my mermaid painting, but no, I do. Actually, he said it reminded him of his daughter. But <laughs> the things that will touch people that you don't really think will. Yeah, this frame material, we got quite a bit of it here. It's about 70 years old, off a house in Oak Bay. I managed to get my hands on it, and it's actually out of a, found out, like with all these stamps on it, found out it's, they're still producing this. It's a company out of New Westminster. The company's been around for 80 years, I think. So it's pretty cool, kind of repurposing their wood yeah. from way back. Oh, I got a heavy load. Oh, I have all my school books. You got all your school books? Oh. Yeah, like okay. my binder, so like my five right. socials books. Let's get a picture of that piece. Get insert. I... Okay, call me if you guys need it. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty down here. All the 
the jumps after. So. My boys love biking and he knew that, you know, the dirt that he had made would be made into jumps that my boys would be doing flips on and <laughs> freaking out their mother. Um, but he's, he is like such an awesome God. And I think it's a real lie from the devil that God is this fluffy, not interested being who just, you know, let things go as they are. And, and so that's what I see a lot in where we live. Just, it's, it's evident. You just have to open your eyes to it and say, where did this all come from? Who did this? Because there is such an obvious design in everything. All right, let's go up. One of the verses in the Bible that are really coming to me right now is the fear of man brings a snare. As an artist, if my focus isn't correct, I can suddenly start looking at other artists and go like, oh gosh, you know what? My art just isn't as cool as that. Or identifying as an artist or a filmmaker or a carpenter or a songwriter. We have to remember that God gave us those gifts and he can take them away if he wants. And it's like, Plans of the heart belong to man, but the Lord directs his steps. You know, God always provides, and now I, I feel that it's where he wants us to be, but if that changes, he'll open other doors, and I need to be okay with that. Like, it was piano for some time. I loved piano, and I still do, and I may end up going back to music, because um, you can certainly glorify God in music too, right? It's a, that's an amazing art. Often when I'm painting, it's to music. Josh Garls, his song, Farther Along, is so good. You know, we don't understand right now what's going on. We see in a mirror dimly right now, like, why did my grandmother die when my dad was only 14 of breast cancer? Why? We don't know, but God sees the whole picture. And so Josh Garls' song, Farther Along, talks about that, how farther along we'll understand why. We'll, we'll see the reasons for things. And right now we don't know, but we have to trust the God who does and who created us. Farther along, know all about it. Farther along, understand why. So cheer up, my brothers. Live Cause he loves them both We're all cast ways in need of rope Hanging on by the last threads of our hope In a house a mirror full of smoke Confusing illusions I've seen But where did I go wrong? I sang along to every chorus of the song That the devil wrote like a piper at the gate Leading my some men down to their fate Some will courageously escape it's crazy how we live here in this part of the world. I often do like to paint alone. That is really inspiring, just being out in nature here. We've been told it's full of beauty that will unfold and shine like you struck gold my wayward son. The dead weight burden weighs a ton. I'll go down to the river and let it run. Wash away all the things you've done. Forgiveness, all right. When you're just kind of trying to teach yourself how to paint water, it's more complicated than it looks. It's not just, when I first started, I just thought, okay, water is blue, so you paint blue. You know, like, blue. For 
water. Um, but now I'm discovering, I'm totally not doing it realistic. If I was doing this realistic, it would be black and brown down there, but I'm not. So there, artistic license. <laughs> Such a pretty color. I love this color. And one day when the sky rolls back on us, some rejoice and the others fuss. Cause every knee must bow and tongue confess. The Son of God is forever blessed. His is the kingdom and we're the guests. So put your voice up to the test. Sing, Lord. Adding that little guy to own their painting baby. He's like, he symbolizes joy and hope. Lil Red Be my favorite painting. Thank you. I think I should oh, thank you. One, two, three. <laughs> thank you. Okay. A place is meaningful and and just a way to show really this is just the brightness and everything. Being in God's creation. This is his creation. We're like in his imagination right now. Okay, Graham, we're done. Jesus says, come to me, you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest and take my yoke upon you because it's easy. My yoke is easy and my burden's light. When you have oxen, it's, it's two oxen, I think, with a yoke over them. So Jesus is beside us and he will carry that burden and help us. So anyway, that's my very present savior and friend. It says in the Bible, we are all given different gifts. And the thing that I think people get confused is, well, if you think of us as a body of Christ, the body of Christ has different members, right? We have hands, we have feet, we have eyes and nose, and, and particular members might be given, like they're more visible. So while our society or different societies give different things more importance, it's far from what God sees. There's the gift of encouragement. There's like the gift of teaching. There's the gift of so many things. I mean, people will say, oh, you know, oh, I wish I could paint like you or whatever, you know, play piano like you. Um, I wish I could cook like you. I wish that I had, you know, the ability to have patience on the computer like you. Like some people have got a brain that is great at math, their science, and others, myself, I'm terrible at that. And man, you know, if everybody in the world was an artist, it would be scary. So I mean, <laughs> Missionaries are needed all over the world, but it's definitely needed here. There's just so much belief in the universe out there. And something that I've really noticed is that somewhere in the Bible, it talks about in the end times, people are going to worship and serve creation rather than the creator. So you see that a lot here. We don't think that we have idols here. The very things that God created, the trees have turned into idols for people and I love trees and I love the old growth forest and I personally shall we get into politics I don't like the old growth forest being chopped down the ones that are available you know still around however I also know that God gave us creation to to build and to create so we can use those tools to create there is definitely like this tendency towards worshiping creation or what they call the universe what people say is, oh, you know, the universe was good to me today. And 
and I'm thinking, the universe is a thing. God created the universe. God was good to you today. And God causes the rain to fall on people who believe in him and people who don't believe in him. And he's a good God. And he's the one that needs to be worshipped, not, not creation. So don't worship trees or paintings for that matter. <laughs> yeah, you have to be careful with whatever it is that you are passionate about. There's that fine line of it becoming something that becomes more important than God. And that's, in my life, that's when I've had no peace. Right now, being an artist is cool, you know? The funny thing is, being a Christian is not. So I'm like, a not cool, cool thing. But yeah, identifying with what you do rather than who you are as a child of God can cause a lot of anxiety because what you are doing may change, but who you are as a child of God doesn't change.